So we're working on a uh, Brute Force 750. This is a 2008. So it's the first year they did the fuel injection. Uh, but all the 750s are pretty similar. Um, what's going on with this one is I'll show you over here. So we got the engine pulled apart here on the bench. As you can see, case is split open. Uh, if we look here, that crank's all scored up. So it spun a bearing there. You can see, here are the bearings that it spun, all chewed up. Maybe the end of that one, no good. Uh, it spun a bearing, and then it broke the rod off. So, uh, what we're doing is we got a new crank to put in it, new used crank right here. Came with rods, put new bearings on it. Uh, and I'm gonna go through step by step, putting this thing back together. I can't do it taking it apart, because I got it already taken apart uh, when I got the bike. but. We can put it together, take it apart, you just do it in reverse. So I'm gonna get going here. I've got the rods taken off the new crank, as you can see, that one looks nice. Uh, here's the bearings that were on the old, or the new used crank. Um, not terrible. If you can see, if it'll focus. In the middle of that bearing, there's a tiny bit of wear. So I went ahead and changed them. Uh, Kawasaki makes three different size bearings for these. The standard bearing is the yellow bearing. This is the part number for the yellow bearing. They make an oversize, an undersize, and then one in the middle. The yellow is the one in the middle. Uh, and if you can see right there on the new bearing, there's a little yellow paint on the side of it. The old one also has a little yellow paint that you can barely, barely see, but there is yellow paint on the old one, so putting the same bearings back in as there's nothing wrong with the crank. So, I'm going to get these put back on the crank, uh, get them torqued down, and then uh, we got to pull that crank out of the case, put the new crank in the case. We're going to do all the oil seals while we're at it, uh, and then we'll put the case back together and start going from there. All right, so note when you put these rods together, the little uh, nub sticking out there on the bearing that catches right here lines up. When you put this cap on, this one goes on this, they go against each other. So that one's on the top of that side. This one's on the bottom of that side that keeps your bearing from spinning. Uh, this side has none, and this side has none. So that's the way the cap goes on. And as you can see, the rods are labeled out right there. So you put that out on both of them, like so. Uh, put them both out, and then torque your bolts down. All right, so got the uh, nuts torqued down. Uh, you can see here in the service manual, connecting rod big end cap nuts go to 25 foot-pounds. Make sure you blow out the oil passages before you put these on, and lots of assembly lube is what I'm using. Uh, and there should be pretty much no play in them once you get them torqued down. I mean, there should be no play in them once you get torqued down in and out. You have a little bit of side to side, very, very, very little bit of side to side. You can see the assembly lube in there. Uh, and they should be able to fall down under their own weight, just like that. So if they're tighter than that, if they're, if they're stiff and they don't fall under their own weight, you have the wrong size bearings. Uh, they fall slowly because there's lots of assembly lube in there, but they do move on their own. So uh, that's together. I'm going to bring the that half of the case over there, pull the old crank out, start putting oil seals in, and start getting the new crank put in. So here we go. So press the old crank out, as you can see. Uh, we're gonna leave this bearing alone, uh, cause it's fine. This is a roller bearing on this side. The other side of the crank has a regular bearing like that. Uh, but this side is pressed in, that side is not. So to get it out of the case, as you see, we put in that press, press it out. I'm gonna replace this oil seal in here uh, and these two while we are here. And they're easy to get to. I think I'm gonna leave the one on the transmission alone cause I don't wanna have to pull the shaft out and it's not leaking. So. Uh, if you want to do that later on down the road, you can do it from the outside, it's just a pain. And we're going to hold off on that one for now. So let me get those seals changed, then we're going to bring this and that new crankshaft back over to the press and press it back in just like we did out, but the other way around. So. Okay, 
so crank is installed this is the new crank with the rods uh, pressed in I went ahead and cleaned the inside of the case cleaned all of the ceiling surfaces where all the gaskets go so this is ready to go uh, I put the final drive back in with the new seals new seal on the crank uh, and all this spins nice and easy so now that that is done I'm uh, gonna get the other side of the case cleaned up and seal this thing back up all right, so I got the two halves of the case back together. Uh, you just do a thin layer of silicone on this half of the case. You don't need anything on this half of the case. Uh, it should squish out nicely like that all the way around. Torque your bolts. Um, I think the big ones go to 15 foot pounds. The small eight millimeter ones are 87 inch pounds. So torque all those down. Um, all that's in the service manual, but uh, now the next step is to start putting all the oil pump, uh, the chain for the oil pump, all the timing chains in and then put the stator on and put this cover on the side of the engine. Uh, I already went ahead and put the shifter cover on right there. Uh, I put the little spring and ball back in here so that's the detent for the shifter so that's in. So get this side buttoned up and then we can throw this cover on this side uh, and then we're getting pretty close to having this thing closed up. Uh, pistons will go on, sonar heads will go on, and the heads will go on, so we'll get going on that. Right, so we got the timing chains in, so this is the front cylinder, the bar that runs across, the back cylinder, this gear goes down to the crank, we got the oil pump in down here, that goes to the crank, we got our starter gear, this has a one way bearing, so it should only spin one way, you can't spin it the other way, the reduction gear for the starter, and then our stator the magnet for the stator here uh, we got to torque the crank bolt down and then that should be good then we'll probably start working on honing cylinders uh, putting pistons on and new piston rings all right so putting the brute force uh, 750 engine back together here as you can see uh, i got this piston in got this jugger on this side uh, what i found easiest to do on this was to uh, put the piston on and then put the rings on that way you're not trying to line them all up and then you move them and then you gotta line them all up again. Uh, most important thing to remember, F goes to the front, so this one is facing to the front, this one is facing to the front. Uh, the rings have letters on one side, so the top ring has an R, I think the second ring has a RN. Both the letters need to face up and then the gap goes on the front on the top and the back on the bottom ring. So I uh, went ahead and honed the cylinders out really quick, uh, just with a simple hone. I'm gonna throw that one on. Uh, and then clean the heads up. Make sure you put assembly lube on everything. So we on, on the wrist pins there. Uh, put some on the cams before we crank it up. And put the heads on. Then we can start throwing all these covers on and get the engine back in the bike. Alright, so got this piston put on. Uh, the jugs put on there. Got this head put on on this side. Uh, the cams are just sitting there. The timing chain is not on it. But it is on. Uh, it's torqued down. Uh, note, don't forget when you're putting the heads back on, these little oil tubes stick down in there. Make sure you put those in. Make sure you put your timing chain guide in. That one should go there. The other one gets the tensioner, so it should move. This one should not move when it locks in there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this head on, and then we'll go through timing this engine. That's a little weird, but we'll get to that next. All right, so went ahead and threw the side cover on because I'm trying to get the camshafts in and get them timed correctly. Uh, and the reason you got to put this cover on, well, I was done with everything under here anyways. But you have to put this cover on because your timing mark, if you can see in there, lines up to the cover. So there's a little groove in there. And if you, I don't know if you can see, but that has an R with the groove there and the line. So you line that line up to the groove. That means rear. So you do the rear cam. So on the rear cam, you have an arrow at the top that faces up. And you have these two marks at the sides. So with that on R, you want those two marks lined up there and your arrow facing up. Uh, it's kind of tricky to get this timing chain around here, but you can get it on. Uh, you cannot have the tensioners in when you're doing this. Obviously, you put the tensioners in after. So that's the rear. Now I'm going to spin this, line up the front, and do the same thing on the front. Uh, and then can start putting the uh, valve covers on and put the tensioners in. All right, so uh, I haven't been doing a lot of filming lately because I've been trying just to get this in the bike. But I got the engine in the bike, 
just stuck the throttle bodies on, the exhaust on, and hooked up all the sensors. I uh, cranked it over a bunch to prime the oil pump, filled it with oil, cranked it over. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the neutral safety switch and stuff. Like I said, the spike was in pieces when I got it, so it's got a bunch of lights on the dash. Uh, oil lights on, it has oil in it. Neutral light won't come on, but if I hold the brakes, it should start here. So let's see. It's not happy because all the air box and stuff is off of it, but... All right, so that's that. Uh, engine's in the brute force. I'm gonna stop this video uh, here. And then uh, next time we're putting the bike back together and doing everything else. So thanks for watching.